welcome to my channel hope all are doing good yes so today we are going to learn something interesting by comparing it with our day to day life activities so come let's learn together okay and if you like the video please click on the like button and if you haven't subscribed my channel yet please do it and if you find anything interesting share it with your friends okay what is pressure so the very first thing that comes into our mind when we hear the term pressure is the mental pressure right but so sorry i'm not going to talk about it i'm talking about the pressure in science okay so pressure is defined as the perpendicular force per unit area okay this is what the definition is now we'll understand it through an example okay i have a safety pin and a piece of paper and i'm going to consider this to be my surface okay now i'm going to make a hole on this paper using this pin okay see very easily i'm able to do by applying very less force on the paper okay this is what i said it as pressure force acting perpendicular on the unit surface area suppose consider a pin to be blunt okay in that case you will have to apply more force or more pressure in order to make a hole on the paper i hope you are clear with the concept yes so the instruments used to measure pressure are barometer and manometer barometer is an instrument used to measure atmospheric pressure and manometer for other pressures the change in pressure happens for two reason one is change in density of the fluid and another is depth of the fluid density of the fluid i'll tell you let us consider salt water and fresh water you know salt water has higher density when compared to that of fresh water so the pressure in salt water is greater okay next the reason is the depth of the fluid as the depth of the fluid increases the pressure increases okay i'll tell you with an example let us consider a beaker filled with water and i'm going to make three holes in it okay and when you see the water displacement would be different for the three holes okay why is it so i'll tell you let us consider the holes to be three layers okay so the first layer above which nothing is there so it will have very much less pressure so the water flow outwards very much nearer to the beaker okay and in the second hole above it it has first layer okay so it has higher pressure when compared to first layer so water when i make a hole on the second layer the water flows away from the beaker okay and the third layer it has higher pressure when compared to second and first layer because above it it has second and first layer so water it has heavy pressure and it will move away from the beaker very much far away from the beaker so i hope you are clear with the concept so change in pressure occurs for two reason one is density and another is depth yes so i hope you are all clear with the concept of pressure yes now we learn a law called as pascal's law which was given by the great scientist pascal okay so this pascal law explains about the transmission of pressure in fluids okay please don't worry it is very easy once you are clear with the concept of pressure you can understand it very easily i assure you that okay so let us understand what is fluid fluid is nothing but liquid and gas okay so pascal stated a law that is related to transmission of pressure in fluids which means transmission of pressure in liquids and gases okay so pascal's law is like this a change in pressure at any point in an enclosed fluid is transmitted unchanged to all points in the fluid okay now i am sure that you would have thought that the concept is tough but actually no i'll tell you with an example so that you can understand it better okay now let us consider a u shaped tube which is narrow at one end and wider at another end okay and this area we will consider it to be a1 and other to be a2 and there are two movable pistons p1 and p2 and uh, the u tube is filled with water okay now what i am going to do is i am going to apply pressure on piston p1 and push it downwards so what it does is as you know liquid is incompressible it just pushes the water downwards and water moves along side of the tube which in turn will push the piston p2 upwards so what is the concept here is whatever pressure i have applied on piston p1 is just transmitted through the water and moved the piston p2 upwards okay so water just transmits the pressure without any change okay this is what is explained by pascal in his law i hope you are clear with the concept yes 
now we will once again go back to pascal's law so a change in pressure at any point in an enclosed fluid is just transmitted unchanged at all points in the fluid now we are clear yes mathematically expressing p is equal to f by a where p is the pressure f is the force and a is the area so whatever force i am giving on piston 1 is just transmitted to piston 2 that is the pressure on piston 1 is transmitted to piston 2 so f1 is the force and a1 is the area of piston 1 and that pressure is p1 that is just transmitted to p2 and i am not giving any additional pressure or force on second piston right so, you can write the equation as uh, P1 is equal to F1 by A1. So, F2 that is the force on second piston depends on first one, right? So, F2 is equal to P2 into A2. P2 you can write it as uh, that is P1 into A2. P1 you can write it as F1 by A1, right? So, F1 by A1 into A2. Okay, so what you understand from this is whatever change in area, how much wider it is, the second piston, it depends on the pressure given on the first piston. So, whatever pressure I give on piston 1 is just reflected on piston 2 without any change. Okay, so you are clear with the concept, yes? This concept is widely used in several applications. I will mention a few. Okay, This is mainly used in hydraulic lift, hydraulic brake etc. Hydraulic is nothing but it is a liquid in a confined space under pressure. Okay, So hydraulic lift where you will have to lift heavy objects. Okay, Just imagine the YouTube setup where you will have piston P1 and P2 and P2 I am going to place my heavy car there. Okay, Now I am applying pressure on P1 so which in turn will move the piston P2 upwards so it will lift the heavy car upwards okay this is what hydraulic lift it works as and hydraulic brake is just the car you consider your car okay so you are applying pressure on the brake okay right so that will in turn creates pressure and will stop the wheel right so these are some of the applications where pascal law is widely used So, I was able to convey my concept clearly to you, the pressure concept as well as Pascal's law. So, thank you for watching this video. Thank you for all the support given. Keep supporting. So, thank you.